Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com, and I got my unicorn finished. Uh, the pattern and all the instructions are now available for download. They're out on my website at UltimatePaperMache.com slash patterns. He took a long time, so there is a small charge for him, but you can download it and make one of your own if you'd like to. This one is made with epoxy sculpt on the outside mostly because I wanted to play with it. <laughs> I've been wanting to make some uh, waterproof sculptures for outside next year and I wanted to get more familiar with the material. But you could make this fellow and his little buddy the rabbit with the air dry clay recipe that's out on my website. You can actually do both of these with one pound of epoxy sculpt so I'm not actually sure that you would save money making the material yourself. You'd have to do the math. I, I, I haven't checked it to see. Now the one thing that I think is kind of fun about this pattern is that this is the way all of my patterns actually start out with the legs just going up and down and I very rarely put a, a project out on my blog where you see the pattern the way it started out because I want my animal like my raccoon or, or whatever my panda I want them doing something else so I'll change the pattern around and then by the time it actually ends up on my blog, you'll see the finished pattern rather than the way it started out. And I, I wanted to use this guy as an example of why you want to do it this way if you're designing your own patterns. Uh, there's a real strong benefit for doing it this way. And also, in case you're not familiar with why you would want to use patterns, I thought I'd just throw that in here too. You might not have read my book on how to make animal sculptures. Maybe you're not familiar with my blog. So um, the biggest advantage is that you start out with a drawing that has all the proportions that you want your animal to be. Um, I stretched things here and, and exaggerated a few things on mine because this is how I wanted mine to, my unicorn to look. And once you have that drawing on paper, you'll know that when you're finished up, the outline is going to reflect the drawing. You don't have to worry about uh, whether or not you're going to be able to shape the materials into, um, into a sculpture that you really like. You already know to start with that you're going to like it. Now another really nice thing about these patterns is that if you give your first one away <laughs> and someone else comes along and says, oh wow, I really want a baby unicorn too, you can actually make them another one because you have the pattern. The personality is probably going to be a little bit different. Every single one of them is going to be one of a kind because you do all of the actual sculpting on the armature underneath the paper mache or in this case the epoxy sculpt. So it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, you can't actually reproduce them entirely. We're not using a mold or anything, but you'll know before you start that the second person will also be just as happy with their unicorn as the first person would because they're going to be really, really similar. Now why did I say that I always start out with my animal patterns standing up straight like this? Um, the best way I can explain it is um, if you remember that drawing by Leonardo da Vinci where the guy's standing out like this and it's a circle, uh, I think his legs are wide apart, and the reason for that drawing that he did was to set the, um, the proportions of the arms and the legs of an average man. That's basically what we're doing with this by making a pattern, I'll show you here, but once we have the everything set, we have the proportions the way we want them and we have a drawing that we really like, then we can start changing it. Like for this fellow, while I was doing it, I, I started thinking, why well, it would be kind of fun to do Pegasus too. That would be kind of fun to have the both of them together. So I could actually use the same pattern, but make Pegasus doing something else. You can't imagine Pegasus just sitting here calmly speak, talking to his little friend the rabbit. Um, Pegasus is going to want to do something. You can actually use exactly the same pattern to make him doing anything that you want to. Um, let me show you how that's done. You're going to need your pattern pieces and this is the body piece. I've got some aluminum foil balls here already attached with some hot glue so that that can keep the legs apart from the body at the right depth. If we were going to make them just standing up, we would use all four legs, of course. We'd put one of them on at a time with the hot glue, and we would make it so that he would stand up straight like this. But we want, in this case, if we want to change it, we're going to have to change those legs. 
the um, because we know exactly how long all the bones are going to be, all we have to do is make corrections at the joints of the legs, tape it together in a few places where we have to cut the cardboard, and then glue it back onto the body pattern. I've got a, a picture of a foal right here. I'm not going to show them to you because it's copyrighted. <laughs> I can't do that. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and, and change this guy right now. This is one of the back legs. Uh, he's got a back leg that is um, way out behind him because he's running. Now we have to um, cut the cardboard because the cardboard itself does not bend very good. And we're going to cut it at the joints. I'm going to cut it on the other side too, right underneath the knee. So I've got him changed that way. I'm going to cut him again. Now remember, um, the one thing to be really careful about when you're doing this is to make sure that you're bending the bones in the right place. Your, um, your muscles can stretch and they can bunch up. Bones obviously can't do that, so they can only bend right at the joints. He's got his uh, lower bits right down here by his hoof. Now, I guess that's his ankle. I don't know what they're officially called. But that's going to bend backwards. There's another joint right there. That one is bending in the exactly opposite way that the, um, the pattern does. But it still works. There we go. On this particular photograph shows that his right hind leg is bent way back and straight. And his left front leg is also going out straight. Um, the only change that I'm going to need to make on the um, front leg is to bend him here. And he wants his, which is, wants this to be just a little straighter, like that. The right hind leg actually looks exactly like this. I don't have to change it at all. And his other front leg is bent quite a lot, so I am going to have to change this one. And again, this totally depends on the photograph that you're looking at. Again, I'm, I'm bunching up a lot of the uh, muscles and stretching out a lot of muscles. I'm not changing the length of any of the bones. <laughs> not bending them in the middle. That doesn't work. So now we have this one. So now I'm going to go ahead and glue them all together so that you can see how this guy looks. So I put a little bit of masking tape on it while I was waiting for the hot glue gun to heat up. And I attached the pieces to the body pattern so that they were in the same position that they are in the photograph I was looking at. And now using exactly the same pattern, I went from standing up straight, looking very um, serene and calm to running. You can also do the, exactly the same thing with the neck and head. I didn't need to because of the way my photograph looked, but you can do that. And then, of course, you would need to fill in the rest of the muscles and all the shapes with your aluminum foil. You might be wondering, well, how the heck do I do that? I've got the pattern changed. Um, the instructions for this fellow have him just standing there being polite, and this guy's running, so how is it going to how we're going to change that. That actually is not a big problem because all the muscles are all still in the same place. They're not going to move. They're going to stretch. They're going to bunch up. So you will need to look at your photographs to see exactly um, which ones are more prominent now than they would be if he was just standing still. But as long as you get all those muscles in the same place that they are on the pattern, then 
you just have to make them a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, a little bit fatter, and, and it works out just fine. Now, if you would like to make some patterns of your own, I highly recommend it because it's so much fun to start out with a drawing of your own and create something totally from scratch. And the making the patterns and putting them on the inside of your sculpture really make it so much easier. I wanted also to mention, though, that when I was making this fellow and putting this pattern together, I did use a lot of photographs that I found online of baby, uh, they're Somali wild asses. Uh, they're just gorgeous animals, just beautiful. Go ahead and look them up because I mean, you just fall in love with them, I know. But the other thing that I did is I spent a lot of time with this book and another book that I have on uh, animal anatomy. And the reason that I like to look at drawing books instead of just photographs is because almost every photograph you see is going to be taken slightly off to the side. And if the, if the photograph isn't exactly a f straight on, then the shapes are going to be just a little bit different. So it'll look right when you're looking at that photograph because you know what you're looking at. Uh, you know that it's a horse or a small wild ass or whatever it is that you're looking at. But once you get your pattern done and you get your sculpture done, then the legs are going to be not quite the right shape or the face might not be quite the right shape because you didn't see it from the side exactly. But if you have a book like this that has um, drawings, both of the animal from the side, like this one, I'm going to show you here if I can find him. Like here's a really nice drawing of, of an adult horse, and he's the drawing is taken directly from the side, which uh, is almost impossible to find a photograph that looks like this. And then a drawing book, if it's a really good one, like this one by Ken Holtman, it's also going to show you a whole lot of drawings of the animal doing something. And these uh, action drawings can be really helpful if you're trying to create a, a, a really dynamic sculpture. You'd still want to start out, like I said, with the legs straight up and down so that you have all the proportions right. But then you can use a book like this to get some really good ideas about how to make your sculpture more active, more dynamic. So I really highly recommend it. Um, this is one of my favorite books, Ken Holtgren, The Art of Animal Drawing. And I have had this for years and I've just almost totally worn it out. I think it's just fantastic. Now, if you would like to make a unicorn using my pattern, uh, you're certainly welcome to do that. You can find it out at ultimatepapermache.com slash patterns. Uh, there's a lot of other patterns out there, too. And when you're done making your unicorn, be sure and come back to ultimatepapermache.com and show it off, because I would love to see how it turns out. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.